watch too many of these starship battles and it will become glaringly obvious that space is not at all a safe place to be. Goodbye, Lieutenant. You are continually shook, shaken, and jostled in every which direction and only occasionally does anybody see fit to offer any explanation. I'm getting counted to report from Deck 4, 5, 8, and 17! Did you ever wonder how we accomplished that violent rocking motion as if we were just struck by a photon torpedo blast? Well, sometimes it can be a two-step process. One, the camera filming the scene can shake back and forth. And two, the actors are choreographed to lurch in unison. After seven years, we've got it down to a science. No! Being a tad more serious for just a second, it is possible to explain all this with just a little bit more scientific of. And this time, let's just come right out and say it. The conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change form. Saratoga, this is Demios. At first glance, you might notice that the nuclear energy in the explosion was at one point entirely contained as potential energy inside the warhead. And if you said that, you'd be right. But we can do a lot better than that. We'll start with the flashlight and its batteries with chemical energy. The flashlight changes chemical into light. The solar panel changes light into electricity. The radio changes electricity into radio waves, which fly across space and hook it on the other end where they're converted back into sound. It's been on a long journey, but it is still exactly the same energy, changing from form to form to form. And with this, we can obviously see our conservation. The destruction of a starship bulkhead, on the other hand, isn't nearly so visually obvious. The comms out! So are weapons. Physical objects don't explain at all how Impact A can connect Victim B. And so to continue to work in large, rigid, solid objects, the conservation of energy needs some kind of connecting mechanism to affect the whole piece all at once. And that can be as simple as a wave. In our usual form of entertainment, waves are associated with, with anything destructive. And sometimes that's correct. But this is only one of two kinds. The first kind. Whenever you see ripples, you're seeing transverse waves. And the ripples are just a form of energy moving through matter, displacing it as it goes with visible crests, amplitude, and wavelength. So some of these are hurtless. Others, not so much. exciting as this is, this does not explain starships. This wave cannot be seen, but it can be felt. And with longitudinal waves, we can now identify the bane of starship personnel. Unlike transverse, which are limited to surface ripples, longitudinal waves are internal. Pulses of compressed energy which can batter a starship into fragments from the inside out. This is exactly where the conservation of energy comes out to play. The potential of the torpedo turns into an explosion and is transferred into physical waves. In the heat of battle, this allows for an insidious tactic. For instead of being forced to blast through a warship's nearly indestructible shields and armor, all that is really required is to send compression waves through the armor and reduce the crew and interior mechanics to so much liquid mush. We are! That was something else! Ah. 
Having already admitted that space in general is not safe, it's no great realization to see that unlike other aspects of physics, longitudinal waves have no positive benefits whatsoever. But since we can now identify waves, both transverse and longitudinal, it's now safe to think that we have the whole process all figured out. The Defiant has opened fire on us! Obviously. Not exactly. There's just one little problem. Everything that we hear here is wrong. For I could never bring up longitudinal waves without bringing up their most obvious example. Sound. Sound is caused by compressed waves in air. And sound needs the air to travel from person to person. Whether it's ripples in water or shockwaves through a starship, every wave needs something to travel through to get where it's going. And that's the problem. For in space, there is no air. There's nothing to catch the longitudinal waves. There's nothing to deliver the longitudinal waves. Therefore, for purest scientific accuracy in space's darkest depths, the only thing you should ever expect to hear is... With apologies to Newton, Copernicus, and Kepler, this is totally the realm of the old fogey. Scientific accuracy is the frequent cause celeb of notable science fiction authors, authors who have clearly forgotten that the line between accurate and being a humorless bean counter is very much more transparent than they would like to believe. Must we go all the way back to Socrates to remember that wisdom begins with wonder, not with the rule book? I therefore say, forget it! We learn what we can, when we can, and enjoy it when we do. The rest of the time, let's make some noise!